It's not for everyone. Yeah, yeah baby. baby. We should tell the whole world what we're like. So only the people who likes us will come. Yo, we don't want somebody to come on holiday by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> come on. First, we need to tell everyone where we are. Ready, Uncle Brian? Okay, search for Collins. Here we are in the middle of the Pacific between Hawaii and New Zealand. Oh, click, click. See, we're so hard to find. No, we're not. These direct flights from Sydney, Los Angeles, Auckland. Shh. People like to impress their friends saying they were the first one here, like the Americans on the moon. So if we Google Earth, does that make Brian Google moon? <laughs> Google moon isn't spooky. Yeah, there's nothing to be scared of in a little paradise. Come on. Now, these are the kind of tourists we want here. Why then? They're not hiding like hermit crabs in the resort. They are exploring in the whole island for themselves. But why are they wearing light? There's no church today. And why are they running so slowly? What's wrong with them? Wait, I know them. They're the couple from the other tourist ads. Hey, there's no slow motion here in a little paradise. This is too much to do. Really? Like what? It's so easy to go kite surfing. Well, he makes it look easy. I've done that. Easy. Just baby stuff. Easy. I could do that, but I don't want to. Exploring the lagoon? So easy. How does she do that? So easy to do that in the morning. And there are the lunch. Look at them up there. Not here again. Ah, oh, it's like a pig swimming in the afternoon. Pig swimming? Cool. Yeah, and where is the church? We wear bright colors. Uncles, aunties, <laughs> everybody. Even Poco, our local ninja. He's easy to spot. Morning, Poco! Get there! Get there, Poco! Here I come! Poco! Poco? Poco? Now that's more like it. Hi, Poco! What about the stuff we don't have? No big hotels, no high-rises. Yeah, and no building taller than a coconut tree. Hey, no traffic lights. Yeah, no keeping up with the Joneses, bro. Who are the Joneses? You didn't hear? Did this flash family has got two of everything. Two flat screen TV, dishwashers, lawn mowers, bro. For real? Where do they keep it all? And there's huge houses, and they work all the time. So they don't ever fish, or swim, or cook home, or even watch rugby, bro. Two flash screen TVs, and no rugby, not even highlights. Ugh, those poor people. We're lucky we don't have shopping malls. Bro, you know what my mama said? If you're lucky enough to be in a little paradise, you're lucky enough. I know, we don't have McDonald's. That's not strictly true. Come on. See? OK, these are the only McDonald's in the Cook Islands. Can we get out of the sun now? Why did you guys get married here? Be just all to yourself. A romantic sunset. So only the people who really loved us would come to our wedding. And everyone gets to spend their honeymoon with us. Woo! Yeah. Yo, 
Kiorana. Kiorana and welcome to Rarotonga. Welcome to the Rarotongan Beach Resort and Spa. Your perfect family getaway. We're located on the southwest side of the island. Ideal, perfect location for snorkeling or just heading to the beach with the kids. And obviously in, in front of us we have our marine sanctuary. Just been here now since the year 2000. Amazing fish life out here, amazing snorkeling. So perfect for the family. Grab the kids now and we'll see you in Rarotonga. Welcome to Mufu's Kids Club. Kids absolutely love this place. Parents, you can drop off the kids here for a few hours while you go out and enjoy the island. We're open from Sunday to Monday, 9 to 12, 2 to 5, and 7 to 9. Mufu's Kids Club, best things since sliced bread. Thank you very much for watching this video. Um, please visit us on our website, thebrowlthoman.com or make contact with us on 682-25800. See you shortly. Fiji's diving is surprising. Reefs of great contrast and diversity. Soft coral-laden pinnacles, shallow hard coral gardens, current-swept channels, and pelagic-rich drop-offs. Strong ocean currents through barrier reefs lead to calm and protected coral lagoons. Fiji's diving is equally diverse and dynamic. Here, you can swim the whole gamut of underwater experiences and still never see it all. If variety is the spice of life, then Fiji is diving's red-hot chili pepper. Soft corals are only symbolic of Fiji's complete story. The soft corals' vibrant colors and giant size, 
the massive clouds of fish and clusters of invertebrates that live among their branches. The dramatic changes they undergo in their daily dance to the rhythm of tides and currents, and the many types of underwater environments in which they thrive. Fiji's remarkable soft corals embody all the elements that make Fiji's reefs so exceptional. Drama and diversity, brilliant lavish panoramas, deep water rich with food and shelter for the mysterious and rare. Fiji's marine realm is as splendid and unpredictable as nature can be. But to die Fiji is to indulge in much more than the planet's prettiest soft coral and reef fish scenery. The nation's 300 plus islands and atolls are entwined in a complex system of barrier reefs so vast that an entire lifetime would not be enough to see them all. With about a thousand species of fish, several hundred types of corals and sponges, an infinite array of crustaceans, mollusks, anemones, worms, and other invertebrates, plus new animals still being discovered by divers and described by scientists, the shallow coral garden and deep sloping shelf can reveal something different on every single dive. From busy cleaner ras working feverishly, camouflaged ambush predators lying in wait, or banded sea snakes swimming without fear. But look away from the reef into the endless blue to encounter creatures of such size, grace and power as to take your breath away. Divers in Fiji commonly meet grey reef sharks and silver tips patrolling walls and congregating in reef passages. Hammerhead sharks cruise near sea mounts and pinnacles. Schooling during the day, hammerheads become solitary hunters at night. Elusive bull sharks stealthily patrol deep channels. White tips, tawny nurse, and leopard sharks are often found sleeping on sand or in caves. Using their electroreceptors, lemon sharks scan the seabed looking for a meal. Black tips scurry curiously along lagoon shores, and even giant whale sharks are sometimes sighted feeding on the plankton and spawn from the coral reef. Morays nestle in reef caverns, almost posing patiently for diligent divers. Cleaning stations are great spots for observing animal behavior, or stopping by for some dental hygiene and a manicure. Humpback whales migrate here from Antarctica to mate and give birth. Fijians have been protecting their reefs for centuries by declaring some of their fishing grounds tambu or no-take zones. Manta rays hover over reef top cleaning stations or somersault and currents to feed. Nutrient-rich upswelling sustain resident populations. Barracudas swell into sunbeams and trevallies school tightly to guard against predators. Tangs and butterfly fish swarm at the mouths of channels where tuna squadrons compete with giant gropa as chief sentinels. Octopus use numerous defense strategies against predators. Color and texture change for camouflage and the explosion of ink. Turtles protected in Fiji nest upon sand caves and graze on reef plants, allowing for close encounters with divers. Everything has its place and Fiji underwater is a place that has some of everything.
lava e tau fa fa i ta to pokalame o le kuka tau mafa to fonle i sa mo la le le today we are here at the tano tusitala hotel in songi located directly across the famous apio waterfront the tano hotel is one of nine chains um, operated across the pacific and owned by the tano hotel group having such a strong presence in the pacific they are renowned and proud advocates of the farm to table initiative the tano hotel demonstrates this um, and their commitment through the participation in the samoa tourism authority's culinary events which focus and center on local and organic produce to produce astounding samoan dishes um, but before we check that out um, we have the pleasure and honor of having the new zealand high commissioner dr trevor matheson here with us today so let's speak with him before we check out what tano tustala hotel has in store for us Talofa Lava, we have the pleasure of hosting and being with us today, His Excellency Dr. Trevor Matheson from the New Zealand High Commission. Thank you so much. Okay, Lava. Um, it's such a wonderful opportunity to be able to meet with you, have you on the show, but also um, pick your brain a little bit about um, what the New Zealand government's doing and also your experience here in Samoa. It's a pleasure to be here today. So I understand that you've been in Samoa for about a year now? Correct. So you've been able to experience Samoa's tourism industry firsthand, um, try out the local cuisine. Um, so tell me about some of your experiences so far. Well, we're, we're having a fantastic time here, my wife and I. We arrived here just over a year and a half ago, um, in March of uh, 2019. What a year it's been. Um, and we've uh, really had uh, the pleasure to see quite a bit of uh, this wonderful country to see the people, to see the communities, uh, to see uh, tourism at its peak, and to also see tourism you know, struggling, uh, as we've seen with the measles uh, and uh, then with COVID. Yep. Um, but what I've been really impressed with is the variety and the resilience of the tourism sector. Those who've uh, invested in tourism, who invested in hospitality, built on the wonderful Samoan way of doing things, of um, being open, of caring, being kind and showcasing Samoan cuisine and culture, yeah. uh, I think have, have done really well. And uh, they will need to continue to show resilience because we, we still have challenges going forward. It definitely is a point of, of, of pride, uh, the culture, but also the talent that we have in country in terms of um, just how they're adapting some of our, our local traditional food in ways that it competes with the international market in terms of in terms of cuisine. Now, the New Zealand government is um, recognised as a, a, a valued um, donor partner for Samoa. Um, we understand that um, New Zealand government has supported several sectors. Um, can you tell me a little bit about some of the the ways um, that they're supporting the tourism industry? Yes, um, you know we're very proud to be uh, an honoured partner with. Uh, Samoa, uh, and particularly in the tourism sector, where we are probably the, the main uh, supporters of the Samoan tourism sector. A lot of that is in the marketing aspect of trying to ensure that this wonderful country, and this wonderful pe people and uh, culture and tradition is well known out there, not only within the Pacific, but in the Asia Pacific region. So uh, our support for that is uh, part of that growing prospect because we do see tourism as a cornerstone of the Samoan economy, uh, not just now but into the future. At the same time, uh, training is one of the aspects that we're very much wanting to be involved in and helping out in uh, Samoa. And trying to take that unique offering that's in place here in Samoa. As you said, um, the resilience, the innovative nature of uh, Samoan personality trying to bring that out and showcasing it on the world stage Absolutely. because you have such a wonderful product Absolutely. to actually showcase and taking that personality and then trying to match it with the cuisine, the yeah. food uh, and the natural environment that you just have. You have a recipe, I mean you're a real success here. Yeah. I'm sure that a lot of people around the world right now would love to be on this island. Uh, and in this sort of culture. Well, we're definitely looking forward to being able to, to share our culture, share the, I guess, the authentic experience that you have as, as part of life here in Samoa. Um, so while the Samoan government's looking forward to that, it is a bit of a challenge, challenging time in terms of um, the current COVID-19 pandemic. 
Um, given all your support, um, valued support to, to Samoa, what, what do you feel or what do you think was the priority right now as we, I guess, um, uh, go through this challenge together? I think uh, remaining confident, and, um, keeping our resilience as we, we move forward, um, ensuring that Samoa remains COVID free. And we're involved in the repatriation effort uh, and very proud to do that with the New Zealand and Samoan government. But we want to do that in a way that ensures the health and safety of those being repatriated. At the same time, we're wanting to make certain that the country remains COVID-free, that the tests are done, that they all get negative tests before they come back. They do the medical tests, they do the quarantine appropriate here. And that Samoa also has the ability to do its own COVID testing, that it can do contract tracing, and that it can manage the, the inflow of uh, individuals coming through so that it's not a burden, um, but that we do return the stranded uh, Samoans from New Zealand in particular, whether they be students, medical uh, people returning, um, and particularly the RSC workers who have uh, contributed significantly to the New Zealand economy, but also we want them to come, come back and contribute as well, to bring the remittance back, yeah. to reunite with their families and also to, to end up uh, helping in the villages and uh, in the community and renew their energy before they go back to New Zealand. Well, we definitely share your optimism for the future and I guess on behalf of the Samoan government, but also as a, a Samoan, we're grateful for the contribution and, and support. And, and that's what uh, we're, we're here for. We're family. We're part of the, the same community in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. Samoans are highly regarded in New Zealand. They contribute so much to our economy, um, to our talent pool, to our own culture. And so, you know, that Polynesian link is something that um, we should never forget. And uh, when we're in need, um, Samoa has helped us and uh, we're always there to help Samoa when it uh, requires our assistance. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. Um, we're going to head off to try out some of the talents in this tourism industry that you're supporting. Um, and so we'll get to see what sort of uh, creation our chef here at Sano Tustala Hotel has in store for us. But thank you again for thank taking so the time much. out with us. Ole o tato faatasi ma sataasi o lii kuka i le ma o tato ma lo o le tano tusi tala hotel le sunga ya chef Anulesh Chetty tala fa Anulesh. Tala fa. Thank you so much for hosting us today. What have you got in store for us? Okay, today we're doing some local dish like called island dish. Island dish. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to show you something from here. You can. All right. Yeah. No, you go ahead. I'll come around this side. Yep. What have we got for us? So we got to. Uh, we already been in the garden. Is everything here for the garden? Like manioc, like papaya, tomato. Take me through it one by one. What have we got in the garden? We got the papayas. So the esi. Yeah. Star fruit. Star fruit. We got some okra. Pingeka. Yeah. Okra. And some tomatoes. Tomatoes. Oh, tomatoes. from the garden. Look yeah. at that. Beautiful. Okay. It's all from the garden. Even the popo. In the popo too. Yeah. And the lemon is from the garden too. We got the eggplants. That's a good looking yeah. lemon. Isala elu kipolo. Then you've got beans. Yeah, you've got the long beans here. And you've got the... Ulu, breadfruit. In salmon, yeah. Huh? Okay. <laughs> this is from the garden. That's yeah, impressive. from the garden. Okay. And we got some... Uh, beans. Butter beans. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's from the garden too. And we got some... Uh, uh, is that lopele? Lopele. Yeah, and, salmon uh, spinach. I'm using this today to my local shop. Fantastic. I'm yeah. a huge fan of that. So use. all of this is going in our dish today? Yeah, not all. But this... It's lopele. Yeah. I'm going to use the coriander. I'm not going to use so, the lemon glass, but we got in the garden. This is the basil. Basil. I'm going to use yep. this. And this is the curry leaf. Okay. This is our garden, but we not used today. But, but you damage them use using item is like uh, laubele yep. and something coconut cream, coconut. grated coconut fresh one. Yeah. This all like island style. I'm like, gonna show you different ideas. But I, I guess the point is, um, Tano Hotel Group is such a, a advocate of um, the farm to table initiative that this is all from Tano's garden. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, the Tano Tuta, uh, yes. Tutala Hotel garden. Yeah. That's fantastic. All right. Okay. Well, I'm getting a bit hungry. So uh, you yeah. want to tell me about the dish? Okay. Sure. <laughs> So we're doing today, we've got the nice 
local fish is called wahoo. Okay. Yeah. Yep. We using wahoo. We using masi masi. You using tuna here. Yeah? Yep. But uh, but I got my supplier to wahoo today. Okay. I can't find it, looks, masi -masi. it looks fresh. Yeah. We got the nice fish. And we got some fresh coconut cream. Pepe. From the coconut. Okay. Yeah. So you've got garlic, yeah. um, ginger, few, so it's onion yeah. sanga, few and yangi, um Chilis. You've got polofeu, yeah. um, mint, mint, tomatoes, coriander. This, this can I just have a quick look at this? So this yes. is the this is not your usual coriander, this is the sawtooth coriander, so it's quite strong, isn't it? Yes. And you grow this in your garden. But very good for the flavor for the sauce and everything. Okay. And it grows well here in Samoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And what's that? Is that? It is a lao belly. Oh, so that's a lao belly. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, wow. So you've just chopped it up mm. raw? Yeah. Okay. All Got right. Julian and chop this up and we're going to use it with the grated coconut. Okay. Yeah. The cumin seeds we're gonna use for the garnish. Okay. We're gonna put the lao boile and the coconut together with this. Okay. And we got some uh, coriander seeds. First of all, heat up the pan. Okay. And we start with the oil. Just okay. Put. What kind of oil is that? The cooking oil is uh, what you call uh, virgin oil. Virgin. Okay. Yeah. We start with your garlic first. Uh, am I just putting it in here? Yes, yeah, put it in. One full tablespoon? Or? Yeah. Oh. All? Oh, okay. Whoops. Okay. All over to go with ginger. Okay. Any particular way? Just dump it all in there? All, all, all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna just slow down. Okay. See, when the oil, oil is getting hot, then you have to slow down. Okay. The All right. Then we start with the onion. Onion. Yep. Okay, so we're sauteing the onion, uh, garlic, and ginger yeah. in the oil. You have to cook first onion. Okay. Just a little bit. Give a little bit color, a little bit flavor should be coming. Okay. Yeah. So if I like, I'm gonna say, enga enga like kiki. Okay. So just yeah. a little bit of brown. A little bit golden brown, then we Golden brown, like okay. The well, the thing is, uh, is, cooking is like when you cook the basic things. Yeah. This is the flavor came from. Okay. Not after. It's it, the beginning. Beginning. Beginning, okay. How you cooking your basic is should be strong, then your flavor comes strong. All right. Otherwise, your food gonna flat. Okay. Just stay a little bit, come to flavor. All the flavor should be combined nicely. Make it brown, golden brown. So it's a uh, lava lele for it buying more more cooker lele lele a anulesh for my a onga lava lea for it buying a SS lele avelo cooker more more. I guess it helps with the, the flavor uh, of the lemongongi ol me ai. A lele falai ola wang yangi malau ginger malau. And what else have you got in it? Onion, ginger, and what? Garlic. And and garlic. garlic. The first then okay. that will establish the flavor uh, of your of your dish. So. Okay, next we're gonna start with the. Tomatoes. So I'm gonna put yeah. the tomatoes. Put the tomato in. Yeah, then I'll have a mako. Now you can cut the coriander, just make it is already washed, already clean. You're gonna do it like three pieces. One, two, three, or four pieces up to you. Me? Yes. Okay, pressure. Pressure. Okay, my hands are clean, I washed before. Yes. Four pieces? Four or three up to you. Just four. make it small and just put it in. Oh. Alright, here we go. The coriander's going in. Okay. So. Oh, that smells so good. You can smell the coriander and the garlic, mm. ginger onions. Now you're gonna put the salt and pepper just for taste. Just put a little bit. Before start off. Oh, you do that. Yes. Okay. I, I'm, <laughs> I might add too much salt. <laughs> no, okay. you know what you're gonna do? Just do first a little bit. Oh, see, wow. Uh, so it's salt and pepper in one? White pepper and the salt. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just give a little bit of salt again. Yeah. The thing is like, uh, what you're doing now is like, all the flavors, you cook it nicely, take out the flavors. The uh, thing is like, make it golden brown, the thing is a little bit bent, the flavor come up. Okay, so yeah. we're, we're, we're... See, it's getting there. 
then when you're gonna give it to check it after it's done, then you're gonna clean it the other side. Okay. And then when you say kaimi ko kaide ya nga lua pe solo minute eh falai le si tu and then you're yeah. flipping it eh and then you turn it over but it's not quite too through hot. What are you doing? You're checking it to see? Golden. 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 Okay. A little bit, not much. Then you turn another side. Alright. But you don't cook it too much, right? No. Okay, you why? It's in the oven. Okay. Oh, okay. Because you're going to put in the oven, the fish is going to come juicy. Okay. The juice is not going to come out. Okay. When you're going to put in the grill for long, yeah. then thing going to like hard. Okay. Not to be soft. This, this color should be both sides. Then All you right. put the fish in. Okay. Yeah. Your oven should be 160 degrees. 160 degrees. degrees. At 160 degrees Celsius. Oh, okay. You're going to cook it all the side nicely. Then check it. If both sides is okay, then you put it in. Okay. A little bit of oil, not too much. And then you just place it. Okay. All right. The same pan we're going to use again. We're going to use the same pan again? Yeah. And you put the, this, the leftover fish here. Okay. This one goes after the grill, they go inside the sauce. So. This fish for the sauce. Yep. You're gonna grill it nicely, you're gonna plate it when you're gonna plate the food, the fish going inside the sauce. Okay. So now you're gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper here. Just not too much, just for taste. So is that your preferred fish go to? The mahi mahi? Mahi mahi. Okay. My favorite fish. That's your favorite yeah. fish. I guess that's one of my favorite things about yeah. being home here in Samoa and I guess in most Pacific Islands that we're very spoiled with, with fresh fish. Oh. Yeah. That is going to be done now. Okay. So you're just transferring the fish into that pot there? Is that where you're going to do the sauce? We're going to put this sauce here. Before you put in the plate, you seat it up and put it in. Okay. Yes. Fresh and hot. Got it. Taro, you got the steam taro, you're gonna to use this one for the plating. But mostly what we're doing, we can use the rice, we can use the manioca, we call cassava. Yep. And the taro. But see, my favorite is taro. Yep. I think it's like everyone's like favorite. Like yeah, everyone likes the taro. Inside the fish. Sauce is done, it's okay. Next we start with the garnish. And use the same pan, same oil. Mm. Now you can start with the. So you're doing the garnish. Yeah. So you want to do it? Or no, you go. You okay, go. It. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to try this okay. dish. <laughs> Don't want to slow you down. <laughs> garlic here. Mm -hmm. This one, no ginger, only garlic. No ginger. Okay. Yeah. So the, for the garnish, onion. no ginger. Onion. The seeds, mustard, cumin seeds. It's all things giving the flavors. It's different taste. The sauce is different taste. The garnish is different taste. It's not the same. And make it nice. And try a little bit salt. Just for now. Just for now we're gonna put the grated coconut first. Oh yep, grated coconut. In, then you're gonna put the. Oh, this is when the lapilla is going in. Well, all in. So it's just been chopped up. Yes. A little bits. 
This is a different dish. I'm looking forward to this. I like this, have a new way of cooking lopele. I'm used to just blanching it. Okay. Yeah, so this is this is different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So I get to taste. This yeah. is my favorite part. I'm very good at tasting. Ooh. Now tell me one more time everything that's gone into this um, garnish. Yeah. Garlic here. Garlic. Coriander seeds. Coriander seeds. Onions. And, uh, and cumin seeds. Cumin, cumin seeds. Cumin seeds. Yes, and grated coconut. A grated and coconut, that's right. And then salt and pepper. Mm. It's actually really good. You're right about how the the lopele flavor gets absorbed by the um the the desiccated co yeah the grated coconut yeah yeah I if if you were to give me this dish I mm. it would take me a little while to guess that that you've got coconut in there because <laughs> I can taste the lopele and the the herbs that you put in. Okay, that's it. Now this is finished. I'm now heating up the sauce. This is a little bit mm -hmm. not too much. Now we're gonna do the plating. Okay. What are you gonna do? This taro is already steamed. Okay. It's steamed in the kitchen. Yep. You can use the steamed taro, steamed manioca, or the rice right. of cassava, or anything. Yep. Alright, so you're gonna. First, we're gonna put the taro in in the middle. Mm -hmm. Right. Put the fish in the top of the taro. Seki. So, so this is the sauce that goes over the top. Wow. Like this. Some small dice fish side. Wow, I can smell the um, the last thing you know, coriander the and the scene. ginger and the herbs that you had in here from when you were making it. So I can smell the all the, the ingredients of the sauce that you had before. Then we can put this then it goes in the top of the fish. Wow. That looks, okay, it's okay, it's down. That looks gorgeous. It's, it's good like put more, feel more. Alright. This is the local style dish. Now belly and it's everything island style, everything. So it's you can put the garnish, or you put coriander, you put mint, or anything. Mm. That's it, and the top. That looks gorgeous and it smells amazing. I can smell each of the different ingredients that you put in there. It's, and, and as it comes together, I'm, yeah. I just want to take this and just okay. <laughs> run away with it so I can have it all to myself. But um, no, we'll, we're going to share. Um, a lot of love and care has been put into this dish, and so we're going to share that with our, our guest yeah, here today. So we're here at Tano Tustala Hotel. Yes. I've had the pleasure of your company and talking to you earlier, but also I've got to um, follow how this beautiful dish in front of us has been prepared by the chef, uh, Anulesh Chetty, and he's used um, pretty much everything from the garden here at Tano. So they really are champions of the farm to table initiative. Now I'm talking too much, but will you join me in tasting this? I would this? love to join you. In. All right. I was amazed how we put this all together and he was using so many different and, uh, herbs and, and ingredients, and exactly. And at least eight or ten. He's certainly teaching me a thing or two yes. in terms of, of preparing. He said so that... Please, go ahead. Oh, yes. Let's do this together. We'll, we'll get a okay. bite off each. Make sure you get the, the garnish. Yes, I'll try to take a little bit of this. Okay. And the sauce. I always try and get the uh, like a perfect bite, yes. but I'm missing my taro. So I'll see if I can get a little bit of that at the bottom Oops. without compromising the... Got it? Yes. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you're tasting, I want you to describe the flavors. Okay. And how you find it. Okay. Let me try it. 
Yes. Ready? Yes. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> mm. Mm. The herbs and spices really come through. And the coriander is the first thing I... And I make the cumin, mm. cumin seeds develop into that. And then there's the, the coconut, I think is a perfect match with the, the wahoo, but I, and on top of the, um, the wonderful taro. Absolutely, I love, great, uh, mixture. I love the different textures, you know, mm. especially with the, the grated coconut, with the laupele, this, that. Who knows, this is another mm. way that I can, I can try and cook this at home. Let's have another bite here. No, it's so good. It's really good. So this is called the the Island Dish by Chef um, Anulesh Chetty here at Tano Tisala Hotel. Um, it's very enjoyable, very tasteful, and I love that that all the ingredients, most of the ingredients, are from from the garden. Thank you so much, compliments Chef. To compliments to the chef. And I guess on behalf of um, uh, our show, Kuka Taste of Beautiful Samoa and the Samoa Tourism Authority, um, I'd like to thank. Um, Tanoa Hotel Group for hosting us today, but also to His Excellency, the New Zealand High Commissioner, for spending time with us. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure and honor to, to have you here with us. So, so I hope you've learned a few things or two about the different dishes that you can create even at home. It's a really simple dish, a lot of ingredients, but ingredients that you can grow here in Samoa. So until next time, I'm Sheree Moana Robinson Moores, a country director for the Australia Pacific Training Coalition, working with the Samoa Samoa Tourism Authority to bring you this show. So tune in next time. Until then, so far, so far.